Entrepreneur Everything, and I'm Andrew Sanderson, your host of this channel. Uh, as you can see, we have a different change of scenery in the background. We're in lovely Mexico, Cancun, Mexico right now, and uh, all this is paid for by real estate. So this stuff does work, and I'm fortunate enough to be here and enjoy a late birthday present to myself. But this video is going to be about Turo and how we're putting vehicles on the platform. So if you guys have been watching the channel, you guys know that I've got the, tour, uh, the Tesla and uh, currently driving it until we get the other one back from the shop. But we are gonna put it on the platform as soon as possible, probably when I get back. Hopefully the car is done then, we'll pick it up. The Tesla's going on the next day. We're gonna go ahead and set up how the Tesla's gonna look on it and then walk you through how to put a car on there from the pictures that we took uh, the tips that I've seen for the pictures that we've taken, which are try to keep it in the same spot. Apparently, uh, when users come to look at a car, if they see it in the same location, they can associate that with your username or your platform. So it is good, if you're a good host, to keep that kind of same style. So I found a spot near my place that looks good to me. So that's where we're going to take all the pictures for the car, at least for the time being. But we already got those pictures taken, so we're going to get, just load them up. But I'll walk you through the process of the pricing and how the layout looks, right? It's pretty simple, but I didn't know it going through it, so maybe this video will help some people. So here we are on Turo.com. We're at the, the homepage. In this default time right here, we'll get into that later why wow, that's important. But see, we've already logged in. So after you log in, you go to the host, you go to your vehicles. You can see we already started one a little practice, a little warm up, but we'll go to list a car. And it still saves our old stuff. So some of the stuff's already pre populated. But we'll go through it anyways, right? So we're going to change this address to the CVS up the street. And that's where our car will be located for our home location. So we already put in the VIN number. It auto-populated a lot of the information. For odometer, it doesn't have to be exact around about where you're at. I uh, recently found out today that if it's over 130 miles, 130,000 miles, it won't let you put it on the platform. So be careful with that. But ours is new. So we'll go less than 10,000. Never had a branded or salvaged title. I'm not sure what a branded title is. But a salvaged title is where it was totaled and then brought back to life. So salvage title is normally cheaper to get because you can't have full insurance on a salvage title vehicle. You can only have liability. And if your total car gets damaged, they won't pay out your vehicle price because it's already been paid out. So also be careful when getting salvage titles and dealing with salvage titles like that. So go to next. Uh, because we've already populated everything. So our goals from our drop down. For us, it is to generate side income. Some people, it's the car payment. These are probably just questions for research purposes and whatever Toro wants to collect the information for. But we got generate side income. How often do you currently use your car? And you just choose from however you want to. We'll do rarely, once a week or less. How often do you want to share your car? How often do you want it to be put on the platform? And some questions, just some survey questions. But for us, often as possible, since we are doing this as a business, right? Next, we got the car availability. And your advance notice is how much time do you want to get notified before trip starts? And their default is three hours. And it tells you the tips of it of, or there we go, the tips of the rate of trips that are booked shorter than this time requirement, right? But because I have another job, six hours will be our minimum. 
So we have six hours to get the car ready for them to drive. And that could be in between trips too. So now if someone drops their trip, completes their trip at 12, and they want to take their car at six, that's the six hours, right? If you had it at three, they drop it off at 12, you have till three to get the car ready and back to them at whatever location they might choose, right? So careful with that. And the shortest and longest possible trips will take our other vehicle is one day, and that's the recommended because some people only need it for one day. But with this being a more of a higher end car, we're gonna do two days. Even if it's not recommended, it's guaranteed that someone's not just trying to just use the car for a day and do some crazy stuff with it and come back with it. Um, I'm not particularly fond of them using my vehicle as their test to get a Tesla which is possible, I'm okay with it, but they need to rent it for at least two days if they're gonna do that. But that's up to you guys to see which how long the minimum stays worth, how much is gonna be worth your time essentially. And the maximum trip duration uh, depends on if this is your only car and how maybe long you're going out for town for the week or what you're doing, but I don't have a minimum if they wanna rent it for a whole year. More power to them, I'm totally okay with it. And then we got the car details. So now this is um, one of the longer parts, right? So we don't have the plate number yet, but we'll get that. State, of course, Ohio. And this is your car features. So you'll just look up what your car has. So it's got the all wheel drive, blind spot, keyless entries. Tesla, from what I've seen, doesn't have a USB charger. It's got the wireless charger in the, uh, the center console. It does have Bluetooth, GPS, our vehicles are not pet friendly. No sunroof, even though that the roof is all glass, right? But also still no USB port. Apple CarPlay. I don't have an Apple phone, so I don't even know if it has that or not. But it also definitely has heated seats. And no toll pass. Not many tolls around here. So you just check all your car features. And this is what's going to take you a little bit of time. This is what people see on the post to get them to rent your vehicle out. Things you want them to know. So this took a little bit of time, so we had this pre-written, and this is just some research we did on some other vehicles we've seen already, like where do you get to start? So you get a good template if you could just go on someone else's listing and get an idea. I definitely wouldn't copy it word for word. You know. Some people might call that plagiarism. But here we got oh, luxury vehicle, super fast, comfortable seating for five, fully electric. Supercharging is included in the price of this Tesla. Later video will tell you why that is. But just some tips on how to supercharge it and where they're located. You know, the the map in the GPS tells you where they are, or you can go to tesla.com and find them yourself. And you know, supercharging really costs about $15 from a empty, and it takes about 30 minutes to fully charge. But that doesn't matter for them because supercharging is included in the price. So we're gonna make this a little bit higher because of that. It's like you get a car with free gas mileage, so you can't beat that. Or free gas, rather. But if they don't come back with it at least with at least 40 miles on it, they will get charged. And if they don't want to charge it before they give it back to us to where it was left at, they can just select the refuel extra and they don't have to worry about it. It's like prepaid gas for a rental car, right? So then we got the car photos. We will add these pictures might remember from earlier I said try to keep them all in the same area if you're gonna have multiple cars you definitely do want different angles like this one some straight on angles but never just straight on only you want to see the curves and other things oh it tells you we're here daytime open and scenic clear crisp photo look out for moving cars of course 
include multiple exterior angles with the whole car in the frame as interior shots, right? So you do want to sell your car as much as possible. So as you can see here, we went ahead and added the pictures that we took earlier. I had to find some of the best ones and resize a few of them. Remember, they have to be smaller than 10 megabytes. So now that we got those pictures in place, I think they look pretty good by the way. Next. Got the payout par portion. This is where you'll connect to your, your Stripe account. That's how they pay you through. So I think I already had one set up from some other business we were taking care of. But we're already set up because we already have the other one on the platform. And also have my direct deposit saved too. So there's that. And then the safety standards they have. You will have to take a a test. It's actually kind of it's kind of a good test to take, but the test that shows you how well you clean your car and how to clean the car properly and the hot spots that most people touch and things like that. So it needs to be done after every trip, just the cleanliness of the people getting into your car to have them have a safe experience with everything that's going on right now. You agree to it. We would publish this. I don't think it's going to let me because we didn't put the license plate in. Yeah, terms of service. So, you see how it is. And then after that, we will go over how to do the pricing. So we were able to get the license plate finally. So we hit next on the description. And agree to the terms of service. And we hit publish. Now our listing is live. So a few things we will change is book instantly because we want to be able to vet our our bookings accordingly, especially after the last time. Not saying that it would have prevented anything, but it definitely would have allowed us to to make a better informed decision on how many rides they may have and age and things like that. So then we'll go to manage listing. And this is where you'll go to set your days and the pricing. So it auto priced it for us, I think. Or did we price that? I can't remember. It was, it was a couple days before the last video. So either way, this is our pricing currently. And we can change these prices. Being that they fluctuate, I think that this is and auto priced but you can see we have our zero trips there and all the things we can do with it here the calendar is fine except for this week we will add an unavailable period from today until Monday since we don't have the other car back yet. All right, so now it's unavailable this week, but for these weeks, it can start getting booked, right? And that's what we want. That's why I wanted it on here, because a lot of people don't book the the, uh, the vehicles the same day, right? They plan it out. You know when they're gonna come on vacation or what have you, and uh, things like that. So this is where it goes, automatic pricing. So this is where it'll recommend a price for you based on demand and the type of vehicle you have. But you can also ignore it if you wanted to and do a whole bunch of other stuff. So the minimum price 128, maximum price 292, these are the recommended ones. So you can leave it there or we leave it there, not at all, but we will go up to 292. 
and you can do a whole bunch of things. So the good thing about this is it definitely lets you be very in control of the pricing you want it to be or hands off. So it's very nice. And different price boosting from last minute posts, all this stuff you'll be able to see and read and you know, play with it as as you see fit, right? So the discounts We'll keep all those discounts the same, those work pretty well. And if they book it seven days in advance, 5%, actually we are going to move this down to 5% then 10%, then only a 15%. But you see the recommended right there, or what they recommended it should be, but it's okay. We will uh, keep it, because of our airport trip that we just got, that ended up getting canceled was they got a seven day discount which was the 15 on top of the seven days in advance discount which was a 15 with it being a lower price so they just racked up with the free delivery charge for over seven seven days so pick up and return instructions so just to let people know how you want to drop it off, if there's in a certain parking lot or certain space, if you're in your neighborhood, uh, the car will be on the street, in the driveway, um, knock twice to get in or however have you, however, where you set it up at, right? And your welcome message for when they see it, um, anything you want to share about the car, all that good stuff, right? So then you got your photos, everything we uploaded. Uh, details of the car, all that stuff. The extras is where you can add different types of um, accessories. So you click it, post trip cleaning, we'll do that. The, there's the EV charge, unlimited mileage, which can be good and bad, so definitely be careful with that one. But you can't set your own. You have to start typing something like couple of keywords and it has to be on their list and you could suggest something for them to add but you cannot add your own extras it has to be something of them description and you could charge however much you want to it per day and per trip and now you get 90% of that price instead of the old price which was before my time of like 70% or something so this is another important part when you're dealing with these releases or your car being driven too much, right? So you get unlimited distance. If you diff, it's a selling point to have unlimited distance, but if you're on a lease with limited miles, you might not want to choose that option. Or you can give them that option. They just have to pay for it in the extras. So you can add an unlimited miles thing and then charge, you know, hundred dollars per trip per day however you feel like it because if they are doing it if they only rent it per day you could charge twenty dollars a day if they have it for seven days that's twenty dollars each day they have to get it right so that adds up a bit much but it's, it's your vehicle you can do whatever you want with it so leave it at a hundred dollars a day or per trip rather sorry and you can add up you know up to ten different things go back to distance included unlimited distance for us will be off and the shortest amount you can include per day is 200 miles a day but like you said like they said um, offered more miles get you more bookings if people are going out of town making longer trips we don't really want them to do that in this vehicle but if they do they can choose the unlimited miles option and we'll make our money back and you get fee charged per mile based on calculating the daily price. The next is our protection plan. Now this is your insurance. You have the 75 plan, that's the default, and you can change it. All right, so it comes out, or now select the new plan, the 80 plan, our current plan is a 70%, 75% plan. With the 250 deductible, uh, no, exterior wear and tear included 
and the replacement vehicle is thirty dollars a day. So that thirty dollars a day is what they will pay for a rental car if your car wrecks. And that'll be in the next video of what happens when that happens. Uh, no loss of host income, so the revenue that you would make, you don't get if you wreck it on this plan. But the liability coverage, if you do total your car, is pretty much all the same. So that's pretty good. So you choose the higher plans if you want to take more money in your pocket, right? So the host takes 85%. And they only take 15%. But your deductible will be higher and you get less things included. Even though that your total liability is 750000 right? So then their highest one is 90% with a $2,500 deductible with none of that other stuff included. So most people choose this plan because it's the most bang for your buck at only $250 deductible. And you get some reimbursement for that but for this one we're gonna do a zero deductible on the 60% plan uh, included wear and tear and the $50 a day replacement vehicle cost but remember you cannot get a rental car for less than $50 a day so be mindful of that and it's only up to 10 days that'll be the next video and the loss of post income they do it by average of what you would make in 30 days. So we're gonna choose that plan. And you make you have to make sure you choose a plan before a booking is booked or it will default to whatever plan that was on it. You cannot change it mid trip or after you've confirmed their trip. And you can do different things like here, go back to where you want, book instantly. We're gonna turn book instantly off. We're gonna have to review everybody's request to book this particular vehicle we got the six hour buffer time oh, trip buffer three hours and then they have to let us know six hours in advance so we'll save that and any more questions let me know in the comment section or send me an email and uh, we can walk through some other things the earnings and the settings uh, your performance, what we've been through in the last couple of days. Uh, we'll do some more videos later on when we get some more data. But that's how we walk through your vehicle on putting it on Turo. And uh, it seems it's a very simple process, as you can see. But if you do have any more questions, reach out to me via email or in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. And tell me what you guys want to see next. All right, thanks.